<sighs> Hello all you hardcore boxing fans out there, how are you doing? It's Big Porky here, the voice of hardcore boxing. <clears throat> According to Dean White, or whatever it's called, he's saying that Eddie Hearn, in an interview yesterday on IFL, has failed Dillian White. Failed him? How has he failed him? How has he failed him? I know we've been over this before, but who is, who's advising Dillian White for his brother or advisor or this guy here from Black Box Management? Good name that, I should get one going, do you know, shouldn't I? White Box Management, it'd be hell on one if I, if I put out advisory company like that out one because I ain't got a board license just like Dean White but anyway we're going off key here going off the subject who's advising Dillian White who who now he's going on about who else has been mandatory a thousand days a thousand days that's what's that three year Dillian White's not been mandatory three year but let's just say he is let me just point out a couple of things to you. Right. The WBC. It's a nine month. You have nine months right, for mandatories. I know that because Carl Froch and Joe Calzaghi were going to fight. After two, they call it 270 days. 270 days. That's what people in industry call it. Carl Froch knew after 270 days that Mick Hennessy would put big pressure on WBC to make Warren and him go into negotiations and arrange a fight. Carl Zaghi had to vacate or fight. He chose to vacate and step up a weight to fight Hopkins and Roy Jones. Right, we all know that, don't we? Now, Mick Hennessy had been in this situation before with Howard Eastman. He enforced legal action and they got that fight against Hopkins. He would have done the same thing for Carl Froch, Carl Zaghi, but Carl Zaghi vacated. Carl Froch then fought the number two guy, John Pascal, for a vacant belt. I don't like vacant belt wins, but what can you do if they don't want to fight or they've moved up a weight? It's look at draw, isn't it? Wilder, that can't move up a weight and he can't move down a weight, he still held the belt, didn't he? So let's say it has been a thousand days. After 270 days, why didn't Dillian White send a legal letter? Why didn't he enforce legal action? Why not? Why not? So he's saying, old, old uh, whatever they call him, Gappy, or whatever he's called, this, this, this guy, this black, back, black box management guy, he must saves people on aeroplanes at 35,000 feet. Somebody talks Arabic on an air, Arabic on an aeroplane, so he decides to wrestle him to for a small man. But he's saving aeroplanes at 35,000 feet. It's a good one, though. I ought to think of that, didn't I? For some PR. Right. So after 270 days, there's no legal action. So they leave it to go 1,000 days. So that's 270, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 9, 70, 30. So another 730 days and Dillian White's not served legal action on the WBC. Is that because he don't want to fight Wilder? Or is it because he's got somebody in his ear? Somebody in his ear saying, we don't need this smoke off Wilder. We can pick up pay-per-view and wait for Joshua. Well, they picked up pay-per-view and waited for Joshua. And then they got Joshua at Wembley, didn't they? But they knocked it back. So I don't want to hear all this about a thousand days. It's a load of crap. Has there anybody else been managed this long a thousand? And Callum Smith was round about that one, eh? And he never fought for it either. Why is that? Fighters don't want to fight somebody. They get into that position and then they play the exemption cards with injuries or... They've book a fight. So say, we've got one booked. And governing bodies, well, we're going to get a fee off that fight anyway, so we'll just drag it on and 
How many governing bodies stick to these nine month rulings and all that? IBF are probably the most strictest, but if you want to, if he wanted to fight Wilder, they could have enforced legal action. That's what they could have done. But they didn't, did they? So don't be belly aching about, oh, we want to fight him and we're being robbed and this and that. It's a load of old pony. It's a load of old pony. You've had your chance to fight Wilder. 270 days went by, you've not forced legal action. You're saying it's a thousand days? So 730 days, what's that? How many days in a year? 365, two days, 730. So, his words, not mine, a thousand days, it's 270, nine months, before you can start putting legal action on them. So, for two years, they hadn't sent one letter to WBC, so I don't want to hear about that. So that's your first life the wbc you had your chance to fight for it that's gone you fought c-class guys in that period picking up pay-per-view dylan white altogether had been on headline in four pay-per-views great money if you can get it considering his best belt is a vacant title for british against ian lewinson 20 stony and lewinson i keep going on about it but i can't get it out of my head so then we jump from WBC, we go to IBF, we've got IBF route now. Pulev. Now I know, I know a little bit about the negotiations with, with the Pulev situation. I do know a little bit about it. Now Pulev fought Yui Fury. Right. So why did he fight Yui Fury? When Dylan White and Pulev went into negotiations for the purse bid, Dylan White's team, Eddie Hearn, Mr. Billionaire, Eddie Hearn with a billion dollars, Eddie Hearn didn't win the purse bid to fight Pulev. Now, I've actually met Pulev's people, they're all right. Pulev's team won the bid. Dillian White didn't want to go to Bulgaria. His own man. This is how much Eddie Hearn cares about Dylan White. He couldn't even win a purse bid, but yet he had a billion dollars. So, billion dollar Eddie couldn't win a little purse bid for an IBF eliminator, final eliminator, whatever it were to fight Joshua. The winner gets Joshua at the time, yeah? Obviously Ruiz upset the apple cart. But if Dillian White had gone and fought Pulev and beat him, he'd be in the position now that Pulev's in fighting Joshua. So, yet again, who's advising Dillian White? Is it Dean White? Somebody's in his ear, aren't they? Who is in his ear? Who? They were offered Luis Ortiz. For a final eliminator for Wilder, they're not that back. And then the, the the cherry on the cake, they were offered Joshua at Wembley for four belts. Could you imagine Henry Cooper saying, "I don't want to fight Ali at Wembley"? Uh, I don't get that. I don't get that. I don't get that at all. Why would you not want to fight Joshua at Wembley? Ninety thousand tickets. You're putting obstacles in front of things. The excuse were the rematch clause isn't what we want. Well, look, get Joshua whipped, step in and whip this chunk. Like Ruiz did. Then you renegotiate, don't you? You get what you negotiate. Andy Ruiz stepped in and whipped him and then renegotiated a bigger fee in Saudi, didn't he? A bigger slice of cake. Dylan White should have done that. He didn't take the fight. So... He didn't take the Louis Ortiz fight because I don't want to fight Louis Ortiz. He doesn't speak English and nobody knows him. Well, he'd been he'd been a matchroom fighter. He was knocking man men out at the time. Southpaw Olympian. So he fought Oscar Rivers. He doesn't speak English either. So what's the difference? What is the difference? Who is advising Dillian White? And now it looks like, as I said weeks ago or months ago, Dillian White has missed the boat. It looks like he's missed the boat. But who's to blame? Who? Well, I'm saying it's the closest person to him. His brother. He's running around telling people his brother. Rather the hint. He's saying Eddie Earns at fault and they've failed him. Now, Eddie Earns delivered for him. Look, I'm not an Eddie Earns fan. He delivered for Gillian White. He's getting his fifth pay-per-view against Povetkin and he's not been in a European title fight yet. I think that's the record. So, 
Nobody's saying that Dean White doesn't know boxing and he ain't passionate about the game, but if he's advising Dillian White, oh my God, oh my God. I don't know what to say. Now, flip the coin on the other side. Is it possible that Eddie Hearn could, could have said to them, to Dean White and Dillian White, I think we need to create some intense beef and make out that you that uh, we've all fell out or something. I can't see that, but does anybody believe what's going on at the moment with all this and with Joshua's leg brace and Tyson Fury and Eddie Hearn saying that it's a done deal? Do you know I've had somebody come up to me right this morning in a petrol station where I spend half my life queuing. Somebody come up to me this morning. Pookie, he's on, he's on. He's on, he's on, Fury Joshua, Fury's going to knock him out. I went, contract are not signed. Yeah, but Eddie Hearn says he's on, he's on. I said, if Eddie Hearn said that Mum had made a green cheese, would you believe he went, Pookie, stop being a hater, he's on, he's on. He said, some newspaper. No contracts are signed, it's a deal agreed in principle. All that's happened is Joshua and Fury say, yeah, we'll fight 50-50 and loser gets 40% in rematch and winner 60. That is it. That is it. That doesn't mean diddly squat. It don't mean diddly squat. You've got all these gimps from Gimpville Island. All these gimps from Gimpville Island running about saying, it's on, it's on, it's not on. This is just the start of it. There's a lot of chess pieces to move, yeah. You've got Wilder in the mix, haven't you? You know, it, you've got Dillian White. He might be taking legal action. They might finally grow up here and do something with legal action. But Eddie Hearn might say, yeah, I don't take legal action. You can fight so-and-so on pay-per-view. He's becoming an afterthought, Dillian White. He's like an afterthought, isn't he? That's what's happening. Now, I've just been looking at interviews from... 2019 with Spencer Fear and going on about how it's a joke and this and that about this WBC thing. And then they were told 2021, weren't they? Well, this is 2019, June. I've just seen this interview and he's saying, yeah, it's 2021, February. It's not even going to be that now, is it? It's never going to happen. They've had, that boat has gone. That boat has gone. And I'm going to put all my eggs in, ba in one basket and say, Dean White, I think that you're to blame. You're the closest person, so you tell us to Dillian. You're obviously advising him, Mr. Black Box Management. If I'm wrong, you're welcome to come on the channel. Email me, Dean, porkycorner at mail.com, and I'll have you on the channel. We can have a debate about it, can't we? We can debate it, right? Because somebody is to blame now. If Dillian White is going off his head, he's got good reason to be cross. Too many cooks spoil the broth. That's my opinion. Now, is he an afterthought for Eddie Hearn? Yeah. Does he know that? Yeah. Has he done something about it? No. He spoke to other people and that other promoters and that and blah de blah, but he's not going to leave match room. Not when you're fighting stiffs at on pay per view and picking up millions. Why would you give that up? Eddie Hearn has delivered for Dillian White. Dillian White chose to go that route. He didn't want to take the legal action route like Mick Hennessy threatened to do with WBC with the Carl Saggy situation and like he did with Hopkins and Howard Eastman. Boxing promoters have got a few quid. They have legal people. If the rules are not adhered to, you force legal action. That's what you do in all walks of life. Dillian White, according to Dean White's words, 1,000 days. The cutoff point for legal action is nine months. So they've had two, 730 days, which is two years, to enforce it, but WBC had one legal letter. Why is that? Could it be because Dillian White wants to fight people on pay-per-view and just get win out as a guy who gets wins? Yeah, he's rolled the dice. He did against Parker and Chisora and nearly come unstuck. But you can't keep playing Russian roulette. He should have took the Joshua fight. Joshua were there for the taking. That will eat away for him for the rest of his life. He may never fight for a world title now, Dillian White. He could, and now, what, what's he saying here? Oh, they'll take a regular belt. You could have had four belts at Wembley, but you'll take a little regular belt. What? Regular belts are no good unless you've got a full belt with them. Could have had four belts at Wembley. This is what I say. When opportunity knocks, you've got to take it with both hands. You can't play it waiting game. 
they had an opportunity at Wembley and it went. And I, and I think it's no it's no good crying over spilt milk and blaming Eddie Hearn. That's what I think. But when you look at Dillian White's career, who has he beat really? Who? Who has he beat? Right, I'm gonna tell you who he's beat before I do these live interviews. Somebody sent me something. Right. White does not care about a title shot, it's just a good angle for him to play and keep him relevant to the gimps and it keeps him on pay-per-view. If White cared about a title shot, he would have fought Joshua for, for four belts at Wembley a year ago. I've said that, haven't I? White has only stopped Chisora after a life and death in the last three years, yet he's regarded as a killer. As a killer. That's another thing. Me personally, I think Dillian White, according to his last performance, I think he's on the slide. I think he's the wrong side of 30. Now, is he 33 next? I think he's missed the boat. Last year, he were at his peak. He'd have beat Joshua. He'd have been a favourite, in my opinion. I would have lumped on. The other guys he's beat, Rivers, Parker, Ilenius, Vark and Dave Allen. All on points. They were all on points. But yet, he's supposed to be this killer. Big Daddy Brown were five stone overweight and 40 year old and washed up. He got stopped in three rounds by Dave Allen less than 12 months later. So that shows you where Lucas Brown were at. And he was an active two year one when he fought Dillian. Chisora first fight, he lost in my opinion Russ. And Chisora two, he were losing on the cards. Yeah, you could say that. Now, I've got DMs on another phone of mine from Dillian White when he used to follow me on Twitter. I'm not going to read them out or reveal them because I don't do that, but some of the things that he did say, he said, no, he's not fighting Chisora in a rematch. So I said, look, you will be fighting Chisora in a rematch. It will happen. That's what they'll want because you're an afterthought. He won't have any of it, but he is. That's what he is at match room. So I think the best thing for him is to go with MTK. Or Bob Arum or Al Heyman, he's got to move on. You're never going to get a fair crack of wit while Eddie Hearns <coughs> match him, but while Eddie Hearns tried to manoeuvre it and make everything rosy for Joshua, what he's done in the meantime is been throwing you big crumbs, Dillian White. That's what I think. And so for Dillian White's team to come on here belly aching about to IFL about Eddie Hearns failed them and all that. If it's not a PR blag and they genuinely mean it, I think it's. I think there's no good crying over spilt milk. It's sour grapes. You've had opportunities to fight for world titles and eliminators. Ortiz, Wilder. No, no legal action took it. No legal action took against Wilder. Ortiz didn't want to fight him. Big punch in Southport. <sighs> don't want him. Two-time Olympian. Don't want Ortiz. We didn't want Pulev in Bulgaria. Yui Fury took it as a 24-year-old kid. And he had a bad cut against Bacoli four weeks previous. I know because I was there, seen it. Now, and what about the other one? Joshua at Wembley. Four belts, 90,000 sellout. Two London boys going at it. Durr. Who was advising him? Same guy who were on lookout for Titanic, innit? Them who were on lookout for Titanic were on their iPads, weren't they? Oh, an iceberg! You see where I'm coming from? Now we have advice like that from whoever is responsible and I think it's Dean White if it's his brother who'll be in his ear and he's doing all interviews, he, he's his he's PR guy by the looks of it. We have advice like that. God, where, where is he going to end up? Where is he, where is he going now? He's fighting Povetkin. Povetkin's 41 on the first week of September. He's 41. So the 41 year old on 1st of September, Vac 40, Brown 40, these are the type of guys that I want. This is Dillian White's word, these are the type of fights I want. When he were offered Ortiz at over 40 year old, he said I don't want to fight him, he's 40 and he doesn't speak English. What? What? He fought 40 year olds since then. Brown, Vac, Povetkin, the 40 club. So, just saying. So peace out, keep on trucking, keep sporting boxing. I'm not going to say it's only banter, it's not. It's straight talk. Nobody's going to talk like I'm talking on here. People coming on here and say, oh, Dean White's a serious guy, you need to watch it, Porky. Boxing in it, it's opinions.
he'll have opinions I've got opinions my opinion is I think he's responsible and he's in Dillian White see I think he's got his ear I think Dillian White's badly advised if it isn't Dean White responsible for being Dillian's advisor who is responsible for giving this advice to Dillian White and where does Dillian White go from now probably got best left duck in boxing where's he go though where is he going now where where is he heading you want a vacant British against Ian Lewinson. There's no Commonwealth belt, no European belt. Not fought for a European or a world. Where is he heading? I'll tell you where Dillian White's heading. And Eddie Hearn's failed him. Dillian White's heading into his fifth pay-per-view in August. Fifth pay-per-view. That's where he's heading with Eddie Hearn. So, and you only have your... And Dean White's coming out saying Eddie Hearn's failed them. I don't get it. Eddie Hearn's delivered. You failed yourselves. You failed yourselves. That's my opinion. Bad advice. In life, you take wrong turnings. Sometimes you go left with wrong crowd and you go, oh my God, and you end up in trouble or something happens. Sometimes you've got to go right. Or sometimes you've got to just smell the trees, smell the roses or whatever they call it. Just use a bit of common sense. If opportunity comes knocking and it's five, six million pound, at Wembley Stadium for four belts in front of 90,000 against a guy you say you hate uh, and that was a fraud and that you can beat and you couldn't beat him before because of your shoulder you'll get that opportunity for a rematch to correct the only loss you've got in front of 90,000 people four belts the heavyweight championship of the world babe and you say now I want to fight Oscar Rivers he doesn't speak English I want to fight him what? Yeah, I want to fight Oscar Rivers because the rematch clause in when I beat Joshua is not right. What? Don't have nightmares. Peace out.